So welcome back to the fourth instalment of this Dreamweaver series. In the previous episode we sorted out the logo and the Google AdSense. In today's episode we are going to uh, create the, the nav uh, container and the actual center container and populate it with the actual menu items and add the tabs and all the rounded corners. So let's get on with it. So with Photoshop open, the first thing we need to do is zoom into the menu itself. So here it is. We need to I need to find out the height. I can't remember what it was. So I'm going to get to my marquee tool. I'm just going to click from the top and drag down to about here, and then go to the info palette. And the height of that is actually 47. So if we just zoom out a little, I think we should probably make it a little bit smaller. So I'm going to make it say 42. So if we just go over to Dreamweaver. Now to save some time, I'm going to copy some code. So look and get the, the design. We, we want a, a div that goes 100% across the screen and a div uh, that holds the navigation in the middle. So we've already created that in the, in, the, in the header. So we may as well copy that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start from here. So the div ID of header container come all the way down to the closing uh, header container and I'm just going to copy that and it's going to create some space and then I'm going to paste that in again now the, the bits we need to remove will be the following so we want to grab here from starting from the div ID of logo and then removing down to the other the closing logo and then we also want to remove the Google AdSense one like that and we also want to remove this clearing class here okay so we now need to change a couple of the IDs so here for example it's not going to be header container it's going to be nav container and then we just need to change the closing comments and the center container is going to be the center container like normal so now if we just save that and go to the, the design don't really see anything just yet because we haven't styled uh, the navigation container so we're going to go to the main styles and it's going to copy this header style comment and just create some space. I'm just going to paste it in below and I'm going to change this to nav. Now because we've already created certain things I'm just going to copy and paste a lot of this so I'm just going to grab this header container and paste it here. I'm going to change the header for nav. Now we just need to change the height to 45 and just remove this background image save that and if we go to the index and design view so as you can see we've got the nav container in place by just copying the bits of code we've already created and then we've also got our center container ready to be ready to be housing the information inside so the way we're going to create the menu system we're going to be using a unordered list or in fact we could use an ordered list um, from what I've read of SEO the most important menu should be an ordered list so an OL so we'll go via that convention so we're going to create an OL like that and then close off the OL so like I said this is just an ordered list so a, a list of items really when it'd be one two three four five and so on um, so I'll just indent it slightly and I'm going to then inside of that I'm going to be creating a list item that's going to have an anchor, so a link, and then that link is going to go somewhere, so href. So I'm just going to put the hashtag in there for the moment, so it's just a dead link, so it's not going to go anywhere just yet, but we will sort that out later. Um, and then we obviously then need to give this link a name so for example this one is going to be home and then we need to close off that anchor link like that and then we need to close off the list item and here is our first link in so if we go to the design view as you can see here we've got our first link of home so we just need to repeat that process so instead of actually typing all that out again I'm going to copy and paste it so I think it was that many, so we probably in the Photoshop design, let's have a quick look, see what we had. So we had home, about, news, forum and contact, and I've forgotten them already, so it's going to be about, uh, was it news, 
forum and contacts like that now if we look at that in design view you can now see the it, like I said it's just a list so it just lists them one underneath each other now normally I'll have one two three four five next to them but because we've used that master uh, reset CSS file so if I just open that up from down here so in the reset.css if we come down you'll see here ol and ul so ordered list and unordered list list style is none so what I'm going to do just to illustrate the point I'm going to remove that and just save the reset uh, file and now if we go back to the index you can now see one two three four and five so I'm just going to put that back to how it was and save it and just close down the reset file and as you can see now it's gone so we now need a way to make these look like the Photoshop design because at the moment they're just a, a list of links one underneath each other so before we do anything more with these links uh, we need to sort out the the color of the uh, nav container div now if we just go back to Photoshop so I'm going to open the layers panel and then just click on the background and I'm just going to go down to the color overlay style that we applied to it to find out the color so this is the color here so it's 3d 3f 46 copy that out close all this down and head on over back to Dreamweaver so like I said we need to change the color for the nav container so if we go to the main CSS and then on the nav container here we're gonna say background color and we're just going to paste in that color there with the hashtag before it and close that save that and back to the index and there we go so we've now got that in place so like I said we need to now be looking at these menu items so we need to, we need a way to target them so the way we're going to target them we're going to say any ID of nav container that contains an OL and a list item do something so if we go to the main CSS we want to copy this here so the ID of nav container and then we're just going to put OL at the end and then we'll just create that ready for what we need and then I'm going to copy this and paste it below and then just add the LI and then I'm going to paste another one below that and I'm going to add LIA so that's for the anchor link and I'm just going to space this out so one thing I will just say before I continue, uh, when I'm creating styles, if the style is only going to have a, a small amount of things in there, I'll create, create it all in one line. If it's going to be a bigger style, then I will start to create them this way, so then I've got more room to do that. So the first thing we need to do is we need to say here, on the actual list items, we need to say float to the left like that so if you now look at that in design view you can see they've all floated to the left so on the anchor here we're going to give them a height and that height is going to be 35 pixels like that so if we just preview that over here so you see we've added the height but it's not taking effect so what we need to do is on the actual anchor here we need to do display and we need to set that to block now if we go back to the index you'll now see that we've got the 35 pixels of height now that we've added the display block so we're starting to create the shape now what we need to do is add the margin right on the list items to space out uh, the different tabs so if we come here on the list item and we say margin right and if we just say 8 pixels and if we go back to the index you can see now there's a gap in between each one so what I'll do just so we can see what's going on is I'm going to add uh, on the uh, anchor here just a background color so it will be background color and we'll just call that red just so we can see it and now if we look at that in design view you can now see how the the tabs are starting to take shape so if we look at this now uh, one thing we do need to do we need to move the tabs down so they actually hit the bottom of this container div here so the way to do that is to move all of them in one go is to affect the OL 
So we want to affect this tag here because all of the links are on the inside of it. Now we've already got that set up here. So nav container ol. So all we're going to say is padding top. And I think if we give that about 10 pixels. And if you look at that in the index now, you can now see that's moved them down pretty close to the actual uh, line at the bottom. So we're getting there now. The next thing we need to look at is the actual link itself. Um, it hasn't got any space on the, on the sides of it. On the left and the right is quite close to the border um, of the box. So we need to add some padding on the inside um, to sort that out. So if we go back to the CSS and what we're going to do on the actual A on the anchor, we're going to say the following. So padding and we're going to say zero on the top and bottom and 15 on the left and the right and if you look at that again now you can see look at that big difference now we've added the 15 pixels here and here so the, the tabs are starting to take shape the next thing we need to do if you look at it the actual text itself isn't actually in the middle of the tab it's near the top so we need to bring that down as well so there's something called line height so at the moment uh, the line height is its default line height so if I go to the, the main CSS and come in here and if I type in line height so if I just set that to 14 pixels for now and if we go back to the index you can that didn't really make a change but if I now change that to say 20 you can see that they've come down slightly so if I increase that up to about 25 you can see they're gradually coming down because the, we're telling that line that, this, that these links are on is 25 pixels, so it's going to gradually get bigger and bigger. So if I set that to 30, you can see they're pretty close. I think if we just do it a tiny little bit, little bit more to 32, and that looks pretty good to me. So they're now in place. So the next thing we need to do is actually go over to Photoshop and get the background color for the page tabs. So if we just nip over there, I'm just going to zoom in and I'm going to grab the eyedropper tool by pressing I and click on one of the tabs. And then it gives me the colour here which is 4B4E56. So I'm just going to copy that and then just go back to the CSS and where it says background colour on the anchor tag, change that to the colour we just copied. And now if we go to the index page you can see that it's a lighter colour. So a couple more things we need to do before we actually preview this is we need to change the colour of the actual uh, text on the links. So here we're going to say colour and the colour is going to be white, so FFF. So that's taking shape. The next thing we need to do is remove the underline. So to do that all we have to do is just add in text decoration and just set that to none. So now that's gone. So if we just preview this in the web page, so as you can see here, we've got the tabs in place, we've got the margin right on each tab, and we've got the text on the inside, which is the right colour now. One thing we haven't done yet um, is added the round corners to each tab. We also need to bring down the font size a little as well, and we also need to add in the sort of active link. So we need to make this one white so it blends in. So we'll do all that now. So back over here and into here. So we just want to say the font size is 12 pixels, like that. So if we just look at that, as you can see now, that's come down uh, to the, a nice size. The next thing we need to do is we need to figure out a way of when they hover over the link it will actually give an underline so they know that, that it's an actual link so the way we do this we use something called a pseudo class so I'm going to grab all this and copy it and just paste it below and just remove all of this so what we want to say here is any ID of nav container that has an OL that contains a list item that has a link inside of it and then we're going to add on a colon hover so what this is saying is if whenever you hover over a link in this location, so the nav container OL L I the the anchor link, do something. So we're gonna say text decoration underline. 
So basically we took it off when it's just a standard link, but when we hover over it, we want to put it back on. So if we just preview that in the web page and we hit refresh, you can see our text is smaller. Now when we hover over, we get a nice underline. So the next thing we're going to tackle will be the actual rounded corners on all of the different tabs. So to do this, we're going to use a CSS3 property and we're going to add it on the anchor tag and that property is called border top and we're going to select the left corner radius and we're going to set it to 7 pixels so if I save that and just open up the web page so if you look at every single left hand corner and all of the tabs when I hit refresh you'll see what will happen you can see that they've now been rounded by 7 pixels so you can see how easy it is with CSS3 uh, to do these sorts of things Previously, you'd have to use uh, like images or if you're using certain browsers like WebKit or Mozilla, you've got ways of doing it in those. So if we just go back into Dreamweaver, we're going to copy this and we'll just paste it below. And we're going to change left for right. And if we just preview that again, hit refresh and we've now got rounded page tabs. So that's all in place. The next thing we need to look at is actually creating this uh, this one so it's white, so we know which page we're on. So at the moment we're on the home page, so this one needs to be white and the text needs to be a different colour because obviously if the background of the tab is white, you're not going to see the text. So this is quite easy to do. For this, we need to go into the index and go to the code. So what we're going to do, we're on the anchor tag here, we're going to add a class. Now this class, we're just going to call it active. For the active link so for example obviously this is the home page we want this one to be the active link so the way we're going to tackle this one if we go back to the css it's going to be a bit similar to this one so i'm going to copy this one i'm just going to paste it below so instead of using the colon hover all we're going to say is so a nav container with an ol that has a list item that has an anchor that has a class of active, so classes start with dots and IDs start with the sort of hashtag thing. Um, so we're going to say, yes, yeah, so we're going to say active, and then all we're going to say in here is the background color is going to be white. So if we just go over to our web browser and we hit refresh. You can now see that that page tab has turned white, but like I said, we need to change the text color because it's white, so you can, the, the user is never going to see that. So if we just go to Dreamweaver, we just need to find out that color first of all. So if we just go to Photoshop, so here is the link, and I'm just going to grab my text tool and click on the at home link, and then just grab the color, which is 3D3F46. And if we open up Dreamweaver, and all we have to do now is say color, little hashtag, put that code in, and save it. So now if we preview that in the web page one more time, hit refresh, and you can now see that we've got the sort of active link in there, and we now know which page we're on, well the user knows which page they're actually on. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave the video here for now, uh, and in the next video we'll start to concentrate on the actual uh, slider, so we'll put all of the HTML and the CSS in, and if we have enough time we'll then use the jQuery and we'll actually make that work so we can hit the back and forward buttons. So as usual guys, thanks for watching, please leave any comments below, feel free to subscribe, don't forget to click that annotation in the top right for the next video, and I will catch you later.